So welcome everyone to another Change Your Game with GTD podcast. My name is Robert Peak, and I'm here with Todd Brown. Hi, Robert. Hey, Todd. So in this podcast series, our goal is to help you find ways to get more done with less stress. And in particular, do that by applying the Getting Things Done or GTD methodology, which is a systematic way to get on top of all the things going on in your world, um, to increase well-being, to also increase your effectiveness in doing the right things, the things that matter most to you in your work and in your life. And so today we were thinking about, you know, what should we discuss? And the thing that's kind of on the fore, you know, at the fore of many people's minds right now is AI. And in particular, some of the very recent advances in generative AI that have created a lot of excitement and enthusiasm for AI in general, as well as some, I think, anxiety and concerns about what it all might mean. And we're in the business of thinking about how the real brain works <laughs> and how we can treat it better, how we can get more out of it, and how we can get, in a sense, more out of ourselves with less effort and less stress as whole beings, right? As not, not just brains or computers. And so it's early days. I think we need to kind of preface things in, in that sense that we don't exactly know what all is coming, but based on some of the recent developments and based on some of what we're seeing, we thought it might be interesting to talk about the getting things done methodology and how it might work and how it might support us in the coming days of what seems to be a bit of a, a little mini revolution in, uh, in the use of artificial intelligence kind of in our everyday lives. So Todd, with that, so that kind of tee up or frame uh, kind of the, the basics of what we were what we were thinking we could address? And if so, what, what are your initial kind of thoughts on all this? Yeah, uh, I think, I think you've teed it up well there, Robert, I think, and, and it is absolutely early days, right? So the, the technology is new, how people are using it is new. I think a lot of people are playing with things and seeing what works. And I guess my, my initial, um, one initial thought about all of this is you use the word support, right? How would AI support us? And I think that's an important idea, you know, um, I had a, um, some of, some of our listeners will probably know that, that, um, you know, Microsoft has started to integrate AI in addition to their, their investment in, in, um, in open AI and the chat GPT for the latest version of, of that. Um, they're also starting to implement in their product set, they're starting to implement, um, you know, AI elements. So if you go online to, Office uh, 365 and you and you fire up Word, right? Word in, in the browser version um, has more AI elements, right? And I'm, I'm assuming they will over time that they will continue with this trend and we'll see it in more and more places. So I think as a framing idea, what I find helpful for now is, yeah, how, how what kind of support would we like from an AI in order to help us to be more, you know, to be more... Um, more productive and and less stressed. And as a as a quick little experiment, something that I did over the weekend was I actually uh, well the first question that I asked um, uh, ChatGPT for was could it look through the elements of my system which are basically kept in Microsoft Tasks right in the Microsoft To Do um, uh, in 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 uh, in Office three six five Microsoft three six five, and and present me with a summary. And what I found out very quickly was, well, no, you know, uh, ChatGPT four doesn't have access to that. So the the next thing that I said was, <clears throat> what if I provided you with a uh, basically the contents of my system, right? So in in essence, an extract of all of my lists. You know, could you summarize that for me? And and it was very it was very uh, open to that. It said yes, I could probably do that for you, and that just got me. And, and no conclusions here, just early, just sort of early days impressions. But that got me thinking about you know if we. And by the way, I did. I have not done that yet, right? That's that's still yet still yet to be done in that particular conversation with uh, with Chat GPT. But I think you know one of the things that that occurred to me was it's a really interesting question. What would I want from you know, let's just let's assume that I've got a good external G, you know, GTD system. 
what kind of support would I like from AI in interacting with it, in creating it, in modifying it, in making decisions about it? I mean, I think that's an incredibly rich question. I don't have, right, as we're sitting here right now, uh, I've got some thoughts, but I don't have an awful lot of uh, an awful lot of answers to those questions. Um, I know you've been doing some, you know, some pretty deep thinking about this on your own. But what have you come up with? What 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 is that? Uh, what does that trigger for you? Yeah, no, I think the the possibilities are really really interesting, and I think one of the questions on a lot of people's mind is: Will this help us think less? Will this help us get more done? And if so, as a result, do we do we really need productivity methodologies and approaches? Do we need GTD anymore? Is AI going to, you know, and this idea of general, you know, generalized artificial intelligence, super intelligence, is this going to you know, potentially supplant our need to think so much? And I think, you know, for me, having seen the, the Getting Things Done methodology grow up over time, even as I've grown up over time, right? From paper planners to Palm Pilots to PCs to smartphones. Um, consistently, what rings in my head is, is this quote from David Allen, where he says, if you don't know what you want, any tool will do, right? <laughs> and so I think it's very interesting that, um, you know, in well, so in computer science, there's this idea of levels of abstraction. And what that means is how close to the ones and zeros are you? Are you working at a level where you can almost describe things in human-like languages? Or are you working at a much deeper level where things are, are more like math? And I think what AI may do for us is help us work at higher levels of abstraction. So that we're describing what we want into a tool that's helping give us back feedback that we can't just take wholesale and, and go off and use, but we can then start to shape. And I think the key thing there is we need to shape it toward our desired outcomes. And so still keeping track of and still defining clearly what our outcomes are, I think is going to be even more essential in an era where we have the opportunities to, to some extent, offload some of our cognition into systems that can help us do a bit of grunt work. But frankly, computers have always been that way, right? From my first batch script that could, you know, could run through the same thing over and over and save me a bunch of time and find and replace or whatever it was till now where I can get, you know, the outline of a, a script or a book or something without having to, to do the initial brainstorm out of nothing. But I think the key is that, you know, the, our human concerns are kind of perennial and our intentions and getting clear on what those are, I think are going to be ever more important in relation to having even more information, even more tools, even more opportunities, even more possibilities, you know, um, that we're just going to have to get actually more and more clear, more and more sharp. So I see this as, um, you know, a time where GTD can help us navigate what potentially is going to be some really interesting, um, some interesting roads ahead in terms of, in terms of possibility. So I don't know. What is that? Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Is that kind of mesh with where your head's been about all this? Absolutely. And I think, and I think one of the really interesting things that's going to happen over the next little while is that if you think about, you know, digging into the question that you've asked there about our desired outcomes, I think our desired outcomes will become clearer as not only we maybe get in touch with, um, you know, with kind of our deeper needs, as it were, but also as we see examples appear in the world of how other people are making use of this technology. I was mentioning to you earlier this article that I saw over the weekend um, on 35 different things that people are doing with AI right now, right? And and it was absolutely fascinating, the range of things, you know, from the from the sublime to the mundane to the trivial, there, there were all kinds of things that people were already doing. So I think, and I'm very much looking forward to this, I think we're going to hear from um, a lot of people, right, um, from each other, of course, as we, and I don't just mean you and me, but I mean everybody in the sort of broader, um, you know, certified trainer and coach community, uh, we're going to hear from them about things that they're starting to do. Uh, and we're going to, you know, we're going to spark off each other. And I very much, well, as I say, I'm really looking forward to that because I think, you know, in a sense that the desired outcomes you're talking about are, are, uh, are the desired outcomes about my system and how I use it and the results that I get from it. 
And uh, some really interesting food for thought there will be, you know, what have other people managed to do with all of that? Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be I think that's going to be quite, uh, quite important as we go forward. Definitely. So we'll be keeping our eye uh, on on all of this. And it's kind of really right in our bailiwick in that a lot of it is about distributed cognition is about externalization as well. Right. You know, it's about how do we offload some of this stuff in smart ways so that we can be more effective, but also less stressed. And I think I think there's a there's a bit of stress that's been induced, <laughs> introduced into society at the moment by the uncertainty of what this is, what this means, where this is headed, you know, both in, in terms of, um, you know, optimizations of jobs and also being on top of and staying on top of what all of this is. And I think it's going to shake out over time. I think we're going to we're going to figure out, you know, obviously what this is in the course of time. There's a sense of kind of people jumping on things right now. Um, but ultimately, I think when you have some of the solid fundamental principles of GTD in place. And, and ultimately, you have this goal or this intention to be able to be present, to be able to focus on one thing at a time, trusting that the things that you're not focusing on are okay. Um, and, and that your system is helping you to kind of run your life and, and be that second brain, right? We talk about the GTD trusted system as a kind of second brain. Well, in a sense, we're getting potentially a third brain, right? With all of this influx of AI tools, that can help us to, to uh, I think the phrase has become sort of cyborg, right? Sort of part person, part machine assisted person um, mm -hmm. in, in kind of going about, going about our daily lives and activities. But I think there's some caveats to be aware of that I think GTDers in particular, or anyone who um, is really has a real clear focus on stress-free productivity rather than frenetic productivity. Um, Want to be aware of, right? And and one is that you know. So I've done I've done this is not exactly my whole field, but I've done a fair bit of you know work in AI. I've written written neural networks and done you know a lot of different kinds of the um, the, the AI analysis that you can do, including natural, natural language processing and even some generative stuff. And they are what are called stochastic systems. They're statistical based, right? So that's why you can hit refresh on a stable diffusion image and get a different one every time or plug in, you know, different parameters. And it, it's, there's a little bit of dice rolling going on in all of this. Which is why when people say, well, one day AI is just going to run my life for me, I go, good luck, right? You know, there's a lot of things in my life I won't trust to a dice roll, essentially. Mm -hmm. And also these things are trained on us in a broad, big, generic way, right? They're right now, the quality of kind of report you would get is sort of Wikipedia grade by default, because that's in a sense, what it's been trained on is the internet that's full of truth, half truth and outright lies, you know, because that's what human beings or our society as a whole is full of. So it's reflecting us, which means it's not necessarily reflecting the best of us, I think. Um, so there's, there's still for now, at least going to be quite a bit of double checking, quite a bit of uh, needing to treat this with a grain of salt, needing to treat this as potentially a slightly unreliable narrator, you know, or a or a, a slightly dodgy personal assistant, maybe, you know, that every once in a while goes rogue and goes goes off the rails or what have you. And so I think all the more reason that when we have solid practices about keeping track of our own desired outcomes and what we've committed to do and where we're headed, it's going to help us kind of separate the wheat from the chaff in terms of tools, in terms of output from individual tools. Um, and then in a way, you know, we need our own systems to manage a highly mm -hmm. system focused world more than ever, more than ever before. Yeah. I mean, I think I don't disagree with any of that. And, and it's, you know, th this whole idea of wouldn't it be great if I had the technology at some level that said, OK, um, what you should do next is X. Right. And would in, a, in essence decide for me. Right. And this, and we, of course, in the work that we do, we've heard this for years. Right. If you've got the right tool, you don't need to think anymore. Right. Is sort of the underlying, uh, you know, to paraphrase something you just said. That said, though, let's, I think it'd be really fun and helpful probably for folks if you and I just kicked around some thoughts about things that we think 
could be in the future, could be made um, better, you know, more efficient, um, more enjoyable, right? Maybe uh, with the help of AI. And when, one thing that came to mind for me is, you know, I, I think about, um, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about what goes on in a weekly review, right? And amongst amongst many other things, um, one of the things that we're doing in essence is that we are, um, you know, that we are bringing our system up to date in essence, right? We're, we're, we're sort of figuring out, okay, what are the reminders here in my system that, that uh, are no longer helpful? And an AI that was pretty aware of my life, right? What, what all these waiting for reminders, which of those are still relevant, right? It could make suggestions about things that could, you know, get ticked off because I, I didn't, I'm not waiting for those anymore. You know, getting my system up to date, and I, and I I'd go back to what you said. I probably wouldn't want all of that to happen automatically. I'd probably want to have the ability to sort of just go, uh, okay, agree, 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 right? As it was making suggestions about changes to make to my system. But I think that is that's quite an interesting one, you know. And, and again, thinking about the importance of the weekly review, would if it were tuned in the right way, and again, if it were really in tune with my with my world and my preferences. Um, you know, then it would, uh, then I think that could be helpful. What's, what's your take on that? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I think a lot of what people are seeing is that these, this very large generic model of, uh, of human language, which basically understands words and phrases in relation to each other. That's, that's basically all it does. All right. It's, mm -hmm. it's autocomplete on steroids times a billion trained on the internet, essentially, right. To, to some extent. Um, there's a whole debate about whether that constitutes reasoning and sentience. And mm -hmm. I think it does constitute reasoning in the definition that AI has of reasoning, right? Um, it's certainly better than things like propositional logic and expert systems and some of the old school stuff we used to do at what computer science calls reasoning. And it's not the same thing as sentience and it's not quite the same thing as what humans do. Um, but these things can then be retrained on different, different data sets. So the idea that you're going to have uh, we already all have generated if you're you know reasonably along in your life a pretty significant corpus of of uh text right you know mm -hmm. and so there are things we can start to train these models on and it can be very very interesting to us in a sense be able to explore the domain of your own brain a bit more right mm -hmm. through mm -hmm. whether it's emails or things you've written or notes you've taken or what have you to be able to mine that back in, in a sense better than a google search but a google search of your specific stuff so talk about a different way to kind of look at reference information this is information that you never filed anywhere as a conscious decision that could mm -hmm. be coming back to you through different lenses and different ways of querying it in in natural language right not having to query it like a database search anymore so I think that's fascinating for, for reference, for example. And in general, anything you would be doing research for on Google, right, or, or any search engine, and then sort of pasting in and manipulating and mushing around, um, I think a lot of the generative AI can do a better job of the initial mushing around for you, right? So in a sense, it's a bit more, again, like an assistant. You can say, look, you know what? I need a better trigger list for my mind sweeps. Go off and find... What are the areas of life that people generally have concerns and considerations about and give me back, you know, give me back a list of those things that I can then tweak and edit. Or mm. I want an areas of focus list. What are the typical areas of responsibility and job roles and so forth for, you know, or, or job areas for this particular role? What would be a good job description for this particular role? And then take that as a starting point for your professional areas of focus. Mm. Um, there's a yeah. lot of other things, you know, so yeah. What, what, what are you seeing Todd? What? Yeah. Well, no, no, I, I think those are great examples. Another example that came to mind for me was, you know, an AI that would be aware of my, uh, you know, my current context, right. Where I am, what tools I have to hand, what's my energy level like, you know, typically at this point in the day, right. Could make some suggestions about, um, about next actions that would be appropriate in the moment. And I find that it, again, it's not the kind of thing that I would ever take uh, an AI's word for what I should do next, right? But I think it could be an interesting, uh, you know, if it came up with a short list, right? I think that would be really fun and interesting to play with and see what kind of results that that generated. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I the, the the examples that you just come up with there, I think, are are fascinating examples of how we could use AI to sort of create that that larger, you know, that higher level structure of of our system, right? Um, which is uh, again absolutely fascinating and and uh, and I think promising, I guess, is what I would say. Um, and the thing for me, and I think we've said this a couple times in different ways, uh, the thing for me that's it's lacking at the moment is that the AI doesn't know me. It can it can carry on a conversation and it can learn from, and I've been very impressed, right, with having a conversation with an AI that, you know, that it it learns as I respond to things it's come up with and and then spits back things that that seem to be relevant, uh, which is great, but it doesn't have uh any real knowledge of me just yet, right? And that's um well, as I, as I say, I think that's an interesting, that could be an interesting evolution of all of this. Yeah. And I mean, talking of evolution, I think one of the things we're probably going to see is that all of this sudden enthusiasm and popular appeal um, that's put AI kind of in the spotlight due to large language models and generative AI, like stable diffusion, is creating just general interest. So I think mm -hmm. things that have kind of already been around for a while are going to get funding, are going to get interest, are going to going to evolve and going to improve. So once you know one such thing is just classifiers, right? The old school classifiers, and already, for example, in um, uh, some of the Microsoft Teams suite, there's some degree of trying to detect actionability in emails, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, and summarize yeah. and say. Hey, it looks like, you know, you said you'd do something here or, Hey, you attended that meeting. Is there any follow-up? Mm -hmm. So that I think is going to get better. And along the lines of exactly what you're saying, learning, learning the individual's preferences, um, because I think these systems are clunky right now and uh, to some extent, a little bit inflexible, right? It just wants to, you know, it wants to prompt you for stuff in a kind of general way, and it wants to sort of throw things onto a task list. And I think you need to actually be wary of that at the moment. Mm -hmm. The example a friend of mine <laughs> was saying is, you know, like chat GPT and Bard, there was a meme and they were spouting out these amazing things and writing sonnets and doing all this stuff. And then Amazon Alexa was there saying, um, I see you ordered a toilet seat last week. Would you like to order a toilet seat again this week? You know. <laughs> No, I only needed the one. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Alexa. So, you know, that kind of AI that, that it, or those in, the intentions that, that were, you know, underneath that sort of more clunky technology, I think are going to be better served. And I welcome the time when a truly flexible system will highlight, for example, the key parts of an email and allow me to take those key parts that, that do designate some degree of commitment on my part or someone else's part, um, and then sort of prompt me to get that into a clear next action for me or for someone else or desired outcome, you know, or, or, or anything like that. I think um, the tools are going to get better and better at detecting, um, detecting what's in the contents of a, of a message and helping us to actually do something about that. So far, very few of those really do a good job of how to, you know, support you in getting that systematized. Um, but, you know, still, again, if you have the underlying thought process, if you understand about where commitments need to go and how you need to track them, you really just need the the classifier and the, and the filter, right? To, mm -hmm. to get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, but as you, as you, I think quite rightly say there, that's not to say, um, you're just, I think, making the very important point that we as human beings, um, you know, we're going to be working with these technologies. These technologies are not going to be um, making, uh, you know, making some of the really key decisions for us. They may be filtering, they may be, you know, providing us with with um, more contextualized information, right, which is rep representative of us and indivi as individuals and, and kind of the preferences and the roles and all of the things that are important to us. But at the end of the day, um, well, it's not for nothing that Microsoft is starting to talk about the the um, the sort of the, the the next generation of their or one of their big pushes anyway. I'm, I'm sort of lost track of all of the various threads of the things that are going on there, but they're calling it Copilot. Right. And I think that's a great term in the sense that it doesn't, it's not the pilot, right? It's not making decisions for you, but 
the co-pilot is going to be there to to, to support, right? Um, and I think, and, and interestingly, I think as well, that's a kind of a, from a marketing point of view, a brilliant name simply because it goes back to what you're saying at the beginning that a lot of people, quite rightly, I think are, you know, suspicious and hesitant about AI. And if you give it, if you give a, um, a name to something that it's a co-pilot, it sounds less threatening than the all-seeing, all-knowing AI that's going to replace you in in your job, right? That's a um, that probably wouldn't sell quite so well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you know, with with the concerns about is this a co-pilot or an autopilot, you know, coming uh, coming our way, I think you know it's important to remember. I think that human concerns are perennial, right? You know that. Um, and GTD therefore also has been a, a pretty perennial way of addressing those those fundamental human concerns. So even if our jobs change in that we're working at higher levels of abstraction, higher levels of um, you know of of thinking about things and directing things, and AI is doing a bit more of again the kind of the grunt work. Even mm-hmm. though we haven't so far seen things like drafting the you know the outline of a book or creating sketches of some images for a game you're going to create as grunt work um you know ultimately that's that's where that's going to be sort of relegated to and so our jobs are again going to be to be thinking at at higher levels about how to utilize and direct and engage all of that potential toward where we want to go toward where we want to go mm-hmm. specifically so i think that's that's kind of a big key. One of the exci- most exciting things I think is that um, large language models are going to start to allow us more and more to interact in the way that we've been trained, you know, since our mother's need to do, which is using our our native tongue, our own language. Mm-hmm. And interestingly, there are so many, you know, AI tools, so many models. There's this um, site called Hugging Face, <laughs> weird name, but it it um, has an enormous number of language models and increasingly people are looking at how can we make uh, language models our operating system. So Jarvis mm-hmm. is one example. There's a lot of others, but the basic idea would be to say, for example, you know, make me a video of a dancing bear. <clears throat> and Jarvis mm-hmm. would go out and say, well, I don't know how to do that as a language model, but I do know over here how to generate an image of a dancing bear with this model. And over here, I know how to then extrude that into a 3D model over here. And then over here, I know how to rig that with bones so it does motion in a realistic way and this other fourth model knows how to then take that and apply you know a a motion capture of a bear dancing to the rigged model and then another Mm -hmm. one over here knows how to render all that down in a way with interesting camera angles and atmospheric effects and suddenly you've got a video just having just having spoken it so Mm -hmm. the idea of ai as an operating system is a very interesting idea for task execution but I think mm-hmm. the, the thing, the point that I, I, you know, I think I and we want to make is that you need an operating system for the executive function of your brain as well. You know, and the executor needs to know and keep track of what the outcomes are, what the steps are, what the state of play is, how things are moving, and continually be able to reevaluate that in light of new information, new priorities to keep the stip, ship steered, if you like. So in a way, my hope is that we're not, you know, we're not getting put out of a job. We're getting promoted, right? <laughs> From sort of captain to admiral, right? We've got more <laughs> ships at our command and in our fleet. Um, and that that having really good practice is going to be all the more important to be able to be effective in a world where we have an opportunity to be a lot more effective thanks to thanks to technology. I don't know. Am I mad, Todd? <laughs> you're not mad, Robert. You're power. not mad. No, you're not mad. And it just feels like, um, you know, it feels like. Uh, I think I, I hope that what we've done today is we've given people uh, some food for thought about about the current state of play. Which, which again, you know, I'd, at this moment, I mean, I have used uh, you know AI to do things like summarize summarize books for me and and you know do some really practical and helpful things. I mean, I've, I've generated some really helpful results, but it's not yet to the point where I feel like it's um, fundamentally plugged into my, uh, you know, to my productivity OS. We're not there yet. And I'm very much looking forward to, you know, what the next months and years bring, because I'm sure the picture is going to change and they're going to be some, uh, on the one hand, some really exciting things going on. And on the other hand, 
as you quite rightly say, um, we need to have our, you know, our skeptical antennae up as well. Great stuff. Well, thank you, Todd. I think mm -hmm. a really another rich uh, and topical conversation. Um, if you found this uh, at all useful, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, you can do that through info at next-action.co.uk. Uh, it's exciting times. It's interesting things going on. But as always, the key is to be kind to your mind, be kind to your future self, um, and focus on the things that matter to you. So if this podcast series is one way of supporting you in doing that, if you if you found this useful and would like to hear more, do hit subscribe and like. And meanwhile, from Todd, uh, from me, go enjoy exciting times and be kind to yourself in the process. And we'll see you next time.